Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Friday, December 8th, 2023. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $19 Bank Shop best bet, as well as my all-access season pass and college hoops, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Friday in college basketball. First up, we see Holy Cross and Boston College. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Again, a small card for Friday in college basketball, similar to Thursday. Not my favorite card. I'll be treading lightly. But in this matchup, I think Boston College puts together a feel-good blowout W and covers the number in the end. Although Holy Cross beat Georgetown earlier in the season outright, it was a 68-67 upset. This is still not a very good Holy Cross team. That was really early in the season, only the second game in the regular season. I think if Georgetown and Holy, Pro Holy Cross played again uh, right now or you know later on this year, it'd be a much different story as it was early in the year for Georgetown, a new program, new coach. But Holy Cross still, you know, two and seven this season in their other step up games against top 200 teams in Winthrop and St. John's, two true road games. We saw an 89 to 51 loss and a 91 to 45 loss. So I don't trust the Crusaders, especially defensively, where they're bottom five in the country and adjusted defensive efficiency this year. They don't force many turnovers. They're not a very good defensive rebounding team. I think they're going to have a lot of problems defending Quinton Post in the post in this game. And even on the perimeter, he's actually a 48.5% three point shooter this year. He is one of the more, more lethal bigs in the ACC right now. And uh, Boston College not only should it be able to score at will, but the defense should hold up in this game, unlike what it did against Central Connecticut. I think we see a bounce back performance defensively from Boston College. Good rebounding team defensively. They force pretty, uh, you know, some tough shots, and they force a lot of turnovers as well. Give me Boston College in a 25-30 point win in this game. I'll lay the points with the Eagles. Next up, we see Army and Harvard. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. I just don't know if I trust this Harvard defense enough to lay this big number here, even against Army. You know, Harvard on paper, 155th in adjusted defensive efficiency, looks pretty good. But uh, beyond that, they're not really forcing many tough shots. They're 291st in turnover percentage defensively, so they're not really forcing many turnovers. And they're one of the worst defensive rebounding teams, and honestly, rebounding teams in general, in the country. And, I, you know, Army, while it's not a great team offensively, they're not a very good shooting team. They're a pretty decent offensive rebounding team, an elite defensive rebounding team. So Army should have a big advantage on the glass in this game. And it's, it's won its last two games and their first two wins of the season, one against a subdivision team, the other one against LeMoyne by 17 points. Army's defense has also been solid this year. They forced some turnovers. They forced some tough shots. I think this game's going to be a lot more competitive than the spread may suggest. So give me the points here with the Army Black Knights on the road. Next up, we see North Carolina A&T taking on High Point. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. This is one of those games where we see a total of the opening number at 161.5, and, and I still think there's some value on the over in this game. Yeah, High Point has been actually one of the best cover teams in college basketball this year. I believe they're 7-1 against the number, or 7-0-1 against the spread this season, and it's because of their elite offense. They're 63rd in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency, an amazing shooting team that takes care of the ball, gets to the free throw line, and is really good on the offensive glass when they do miss a shot every once in a while. They've just been amazing offensively, averaging over 90 points per game, but the defense is pretty horrific. I mean, they're 316th in adjusted defense efficiency. They don't force turnovers. Yes, they're a pretty good defensive rebounding team, but I think opponents are certainly going to be able to score against this high point defense. Bring in North Carolina and t whose offense is much better than its defense. The team that takes care of the basketball should be able to get off some pretty good looks in this ballgame. They're not a very good rebounding team, but I don't think they would have done much on the glass anyway against this really good high point team. So North Carolina and t I think they going to have some you know, pretty good shooting numbers in this ballgame. But right now, they are dead last in college basketball. Division I college hoops in adjusted defensive efficiency. 362nd in adjusted defensive efficiency. They're 362nd in three-point defense. 361st in effective field goal percentage. For a high point offense, it's probably licking its lips for this one. Give me the over here, what should be a back and forth game with two teams that play pretty fast, especially North Carolina and T. 37th in adjusted tempo and 72nd in average possession length offensively. Give me the over here in North Carolina and T high point. Next up, we see Stonehill and Ryder. This one's going to be also 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Both of these teams, these are two of the toughest schedules in college basketball this year. I mean, Stonehill, so many true road games and so many tough teams at the beginning of their schedule, especially uh, George Washington, UConn, St. Joseph's, Kentucky, all top 200 teams, all those true road games. And they played some more true road games against Texas A&M Commerce, Quinnipiac, and Stony Brook, 
On the other side, Ryder, they're 1-7 this year. And if you look at their schedule, you'd understand why. They, they opened the season against a subdivision opponent. They won that game and then went on the road against Marquette, Nebraska, Duquesne, Stony Brook, Maryland, and Siena. Most of those teams in the top 200 or top 100 in Ken Palm. Their last game was a tough loss against Fairfield, 88-81. to But that loss looks less bad now that Fairfield just upset Yale the other day uh, as like a 15-point underdog in that when they won, you know, uh, Fairfield won that game by four points. So I do think Ryder is the better team here. I mean, both of these teams combined two and 16 records straight up. But I do think Ryder is better on both ends of the court. This is a very experienced Ryder team with, I think, all starters in the starting lineup. And I think they're better on both ends of the court. Uh, top 300 in both adjusted offensive and defensive efficiency. Unlike Stonehill, who's, you know, 332nd and 358th in adjusted offensive and defensive efficiency. Fundamentally, Stonehill, one of the worst rebounding teams in college basketball. Ryder could take advantage of that. They're top 100 in offensive rebounding, just outside the top 100 in defensive. And I do think the shot quality numbers benefit Ryder as well. They're the home team here. They don't get too many chances to earn a blowout win at home. I think they're going to take advantage of it. So give me Ryder here laying the points. Next up, we see the final game we're going to talk about for Friday's card to college basketball. It's Navy and Quinnipiac. This one's also 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. You know, Navy may not be the most talented team in college basketball. They may not have a guy that can go out there and get you 20, 30 points in a game, you know, talented scorers. But this is still a team that plays fundamentally sound basketball, has pretty good shot quality numbers on both ends of the court, and a, a team I think is currently undervalued. And we saw that against Coppin State. We took Navy in that game, laid the big number. They won that game by 23 points. And then last game, they went on the road against George Washington, a very tough team, top 200 team. And they went to overtime against G, uh, GWU and only lost that game by two points, 79 to 77. Navy, their shooting numbers aren't great, but they're a good offensive rebounding team that takes care of the basketball, forces a lot of turnovers, and I do think that they are a live dog in this ballgame. They defend the perimeter really well, which is important against Quinnipiac, a team that takes a good amount of three-pointers and makes them at a pretty good rate, uh, 120th in three-point shooting. Navy's top 10 in three-point defense this year. Quinnipiac, also a team, has some issues turning the ball over. They're right around 200 in the country. Navy should be able to get some offense in the fast break opportunities, even though their half-court offense isn't the best. They should get some fast break points in this ball game. Quinnipiac has a much better record straight up, but I do think Navy competes in this game. Maybe wins it outright, but I'm going to take those points just in case with Navy. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.